Our city is in the midst of addressing the formidable challenge of rising seas. Now, since we are one of the first cities to address it and not simply talk about it, we are practically writing the playbook. So it's critical we get it right, because if we don't, our quality of life, the value of our homes, and indeed, the viability of our community is all at stake. So let's take a moment to discuss how we are rising above this challenge. First, the challenge. So Miami Beach is a man-made island, essentially at sea level, whose foundation is composed of porous limestone. So as sea level rises, groundwater makes its way to the surface. Now we see this when on perfectly sunny days, there is significant flooding in our community. When gravity just isn't working to move water off of our streets because the tide is higher than the road. We also have to deal with an increase in storm events that brings even more intense rain. So we are getting it from below with rising groundwater and above with falling stormwater. That is why doing nothing is just not an option for us. And it's not getting better. Consensus projections agreed to by multiple expert scientists and adopted by various counties and cities in southeastern Florida expect sea level to rise 10 to 21 inches by 2030 and 21 to 54 inches by 2070. This is the long-term horizon we must prepare for. Now, the good news is we know there are solutions that work. We have learned the most important things we can do to avoid flooding from rising sea level and storm surges is to elevate above the ocean so that our roads are drivable, that our sidewalks are walkable, and that we can provide access to our homes and our businesses. So what do we mean when we talk about raising our roads and pumping stormwater? So our current stormwater improvement program includes raising streets so they are above the ocean and groundwater installing pump stations so that rainfall flooding can be quickly addressed, often installing generators so there's always available power for these pumps, and elevating seawalls and replacing aging water infrastructure. But also to find ways to accommodate water through innovative changes as to how we actually build our city. By creating swales and parks that absorb water and by upgrading our building ordinances which we have done so that new construction will be between one and five feet above base flood elevations. Our parks are now being constructed with this in mind. For instance, underneath the brand new park at 6th and Alton are huge water cisterns and a drainage system that will accommodate 25,000 gallons. Bayshore Park's new design in Mid-Beach literally includes water features that are not merely beautiful, but are intended for water management. And the work on Brittany Bay Park going on in Indian Creek in North Beach will have an extended seawall and a scenic overlook that will accommodate an enormous horizon of sea level rise. So we're doing the things we need to. But let's answer some questions I regularly get about our program. How do we know this is the right approach. Well, first, our program is the result of the best engineering minds and firms in the world retained by the city years ago. But when I became mayor, we even invited the prestigious Rockefeller Foundation to assemble an entire team of independent, renowned experts from all over the world to see whether there might be other approaches worth pursuing, an urban land institute study to pressure test our plan. Well, they validated our approach, but they also made recommendations to improve the program, which we have since incorporated. So from an engineering perspective, this program, our program, has been checked and rechecked and checked again. Now you can read the ULI report here, but even more so, 
We know from our own eyes that our approach works. In the areas where we have raised our roads and implemented this program, we have seen substantial reductions in flooding. Each of these photos is a before and after of the same intersection. And each is taken during tidal events. In other words, almost all the flooding you see on this side is the result of sunny day flooding of high tides simply breaching the street. But as you can also see, once we completed our work, and even when the tide is even higher, the streets are now dry. So yes, we know the program is working. We have avoided more than 100 flooding incidents in Sunset Harbor alone because of our program. Now, some have argued or contended that we should install pumps, but not raise the street. Let's just see if that works, they argue. Our engineers tell us very clearly that that approach fully and completely misapprehends the challenge. The water in these photos is from high tide and high groundwater. You can't pump the high tide away any more than you can empty the ocean. Now, importantly, many others have validated our approach. For instance, the folks that rate flood insurance peril have upgraded our rating because of our efforts and actually discounted our flood insurance so that policyholders in Miami Beach receive a 25% discount. One of the best ratings, by the way, in the county. And the bond rating agencies that determine our city's credit worthiness, well, they evaluate these efforts as well as part of their rating due diligence. Here is what the independent rating agency S&P said about our program. To address immediate and long-term climate and weather-related risks, in our view, the city maintains among the most robust plans attempting to address these risks that were reviewed from U.S. local governments. By the way, they rated our city a very high AA+, which also saves us money because a lower risk means lower interest rates on debt. Now, there have been a lot of studies and news articles highlighting the negative impact of sea level rise on property values across the nation. Sometimes our city is highlighted because we are such a well-known island. You should know that Miami Beach Commission a business case analysis to assess the impact of our resiliency program on property values. The study showed there is a direct relationship between road elevation and property values. Where the city has elevated roads, property values are higher. Now, whether you plan to stay here for a few years or a lifetime, this work is important and will help to protect your property values which for many of us is our most important and valuable asset. So yes, we are on the right path. So how do we decide how high to raise a road? And in what order do we do the work? So you know, we are tailoring our road elevations to each neighborhood which is why some will need more elevation than others. The height of the road and figuring that out is sort of easy. While we use nautical terms, the easiest way to understand it is we measure from the height of the tide. Now, some places like Sunset Harbor were far below tide levels, so we had to raise their roads about two feet. In other areas, we will raise roads much less, sometimes only inches, if that is all that is necessary. Very importantly, no road is raised more than it needs to be. And all road elevations are premised on certain inviolate scientific measurements. We don't politicize road elevation. Now, people always ask how we decide the sequence of our projects, which neighborhoods go first and which have to wait. Well, we prioritize based on where flooding is most acute or likely to soon become most acute. So you know, our island is actually highest on the east side, near the ocean. So the areas most impacted by flooding have been in the lower areas, typically closer to the bay side of Miami Beach. 
but all areas will ultimately need some work. Now we also consider the lifespan of the road and the need to take care of other underground water issues like sanitary sewage systems or replacement of water lines that are old. Think water pressure. Now, if the city, county, or state is planning on ripping up a street anyway because it's old and needs undergrounding upgrades, we will likely put it higher in the queue for road raising as it is likely to flood during the normal lifespan of the street. That's because it just makes no sense to do all that work and not raise the road and in five or 10 years, reconstruct the street again when it is still relatively new. You can find the current sequencing of our projects online here. But what happens to adjacent private properties when you raise roads? Some wanna know, well, will there be an impact on their homes? Will water now flow from the street onto their property? What about gates and driveways? So we have learned from our previous projects how to address these challenges and that informs our efforts going forward. When we raise streets, we build drains or swales that absorb water so it doesn't collect elsewhere. And if necessary, we will now help homeowners do the same for water that is coming from their homes towards the street. We will also help property owners assure their properties are harmonized with the road, even if that means redoing gates and swales and other elements of a property. Now, we won't spend unlimited amounts, but we want to make this as easy as possible for people. We have already raised 11 miles of street and we have deployed 48 pumps. Now we've learned a lot and are only getting better. So here are some residents from neighborhoods where the work has already been done. So during the last 50 years, I've seen some pretty incredible and amazing changes here on the island and all the islands. And even to put everything in context, I've seen I know we're going to be speaking about sea level rise. I've seen a sea level literally in the backyards here change a good foot in the last 50 plus years. So since we've completed the stormwater system, we really have no flooding at all. We really hardly even have a puddle after a major rain. And the areas on the western tips of the island that were most severely impacted by high tides, we see no issues at all. So on the, as far as the engineering design of the stormwater system, it's working as planned. So I'd say really just from a a peace of mind, we have much greater peace of mind knowing that, you know, that our, you know, our power is going to be resilient and backed up, that our stormwater system is going to be working. And I, I think the investment through these islands is incredible. If you see the construction that's going on in these islands today, it's amazing. Literally, we can't speak for every neighborhood, but we're very lucky here. But really, when a resident comes here and invests millions and millions of dollars, they at least know, they know they're investing in a, in a basic a foundation and, a, and, and a, an island that is going to be resilient for a long time ahead. As time goes on, these houses ha are being torn down and new homes are being rebuilt at proper grade and being much more resilient for the future. So I think it's just a peace of mind knowing that we can live in a city that we're not always impacted by flooding or other issues. Every project, every construction is a pain in the neck, but you have to go through that in order to get the results that we have today. And the best thing that happened when they raised the street is that we were partners. We were informed all the way of everything the city was doing. There were no surprises. The construction was absolutely worth what we have today. I would do it again with my eyes closed. And of course, we have this result today. So I, I was thrilled when, when they decided to do this for Sunset Harbor. And I'm glad we were the pilot because other neighborhoods might not feel they want it, but we definitely benefited from it. And I encourage all the other neighborhoods to come here and see what happened here. For one thing, I did not have to buy an ark. I was ready sometimes when it rained to buy a boat, to be able to get out of, literally to be able to get out of my house. I um, strongly endorse <laughs> these projects and um, yeah, I hope people understand that if we don't do this, even if it's you go through the process, uh, we, you know, we will be underwater one day. So we need to take all the measures that we can now 
to avoid more problems in the future. Regarding pollution, and a lot of people ask questions about that, the pump system we are building is definitely superior to the gravitation system we have traditionally relied upon in our city. The city's previous system was a combination of gravity outfalls and shallow wells with virtually no pollution controls. The system we are installing now has water treatment, 57 proposed pumps that will include a combination of injection wells to capture the first flush with multiple stages for removing large debris in the first stage, contaminants and soil in the second stage, then floatables that may come into the pump and need to be disposed of. And finally, the discharge is aerated to make sure oxygen returns into the bay, which is so vital to its health. So this system is superior to what we have previously been doing. So this is an argument presented as a reason just to kick the can down the road. Don't raise the roads until all the buildings in the area have had a chance to raise themselves as they are demolished or renovated. I'm sorry to be blunt, but it's a ridiculous plan and it will bring horrible consequences. If we waited until 100% of property owners raised their own properties, we would not have completed a single one of the projects we've already done. Sunset Harbor would still be called Sunset Lake and people on Palm Hibiscus would be selling their homes at a discount. Now, I know some people have apprehension about change, but deciding to do nothing is not a responsible option. And we know we can't wait. Now, just look around our own county and our state. You can see in other places that have not acted that there is flooding that is just unsustainable. In Monroe County, for instance, some intersections flood for 90 consecutive days. Now they are going to start planning to address it now, but at an incredible cost, and they will have to continue to endure the hardship of nonstop flooding. So waiting is just a non-starter. Well, it is. We have spent about $188 million up to now. Now much of the money has come from bonds and some has come from grants, but it's all worth it as our city's assessed property values exceed $51 billion. So spending a very small portion to protect this value makes total sense. But we are also getting some help. Now the state has awarded us 60 million in grants for resilience with at least 30 million for projects that include road raising. Because unlike most areas, we have projects that are shovel ready. We're ready to go. Our program is becoming what other cities across Florida are just beginning to replicate. Yes, it was super long. So thanks for listening. But this program is that important. The easiest route for your elected officials, frankly, is just to do nothing or next to nothing and leave it for the next guy to worry about. But public policy can't be a game of musical chairs. This challenge isn't going away and it's only getting worse. And if you wait, it's harder and more expensive to address it. So while we need to make sure we are doing it right, we can't decide we don't need to do it. Now the last mayor ran his election from a kayak he paddled across the neighborhood streets of Sunset Harbor. Those streets are now dry, Commerce is booming and property values are only ascending. We would be foolish, irresponsible to decide to turn away from a solution that will literally protect our homes and our future. We can rise above this challenge together. Thanks for listening.